Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about offset smokers and modifications that we can make to big box store offset smokers like this one. Probably wondering, if you either have one of these or are considering buying one of these and you're wondering, can I get good barbecue off of this? Or will this thing uh, maintain the temperature that I'm looking for? And the answer to those questions is, yes, they can. It's just gonna take some modifications to it to get it to perform the same as a smoker that may cost two to three times as much as this one. And when in this video, I'm gonna show you six steps or six different modifications that will make this smoker nearly as good as, an, as a model that'll cost two to three times more. Okay, let's take a look at what makes these uh, offset smokers inferior, let's call it, to the professional models. And really what it comes down to is uh, the workmanship and the material. First thing is the, these are stamped out of thin sheet metal. And this particular model isn't too bad, but it's still much thinner than if you were to go get a professional model that costs a thousand dollars. That'll be made out of about quarter inch thick steel. This one's probably more like an eighth inch thick steel that this particular model is made out of. So that's one of the issues. And what it causes, it causes fit up issues between the parts. And that's where we lose uh, smoke and we also get air infiltration that helps or that causes problems with our cooking temperatures. So one of the big issues there is we need to make sure that these smokers are sealed up tight. And so that's where we're gonna start. How do we seal these things up so that they're airtight, just like one of the professional models? We'll t start with step number one, is sealing up the different joints. So we'll take a close look at that right now. The way most of these are made is, especially on the firebox here, they're made from two different stampings, an upper stamping and a lower stamping. And they're just sandwiched together. And the, what you need to do is you gotta seal that up. And so what I did is I laid a bead of sealant, and it's a special sealant, and I'll, I'll put a link to it in the description. And it's USDA approved, it's rated up to, I think it's five or 600 degrees. And so it's made for high temperatures like this. It's a silicone based sealant. And basically sealing all these surfaces around, around this whole entire firebox, I sealed. I also sealed it in between the firebox and the uh, smoking chamber. So I also laid a bead all in between these two mating surfaces here to help seal that up so any smoke or air can't get back in through there. You know, any surface where you could potentially have air leaks, you want to use that to seal that up. Now this is something that uh, you can do most easily, obviously, when you first get your smoker and while you're assembling it. But uh, if you had to, you could go back through and do this after the fact. Um, but much easier when you first get it and uh, put it together. So I'm going to take you through the rest of it. I even went so far as... Uh, it's sealing even around the uh, where the um, handle attaches here because I'm, there's holes inside the smoking chamber to attach these uh, these bolts. So I sealed all that up. Also, another part you can see is the chimney. There's a gasket that I purchased along with also the sealant, and I put that gasket in between the end of the smoking chamber here in this flange that attaches to the, the chimney and use that to seal all the way around there as well. So this is airtight down here also. One final area that I sealed on this uh, while, while I was assembling it was I even sealed the legs where they poke through the smoking chamber also. So I took every single spot where there is a bolt or whatever going through and put sealant around that. So there, it's pretty much, this whole thing is airtight um, with, with the sealant in it right now. And that makes a big difference when it comes to controlling your temperatures. The next modification I made was to install this gasket around the firebox. And basically what I did is I used this, I guess it's a high temp gasket material that you can find online. And I'll put a link to... Uh, to where you can buy this in the description also. And it's just attached with the sealant. I just used a bead of the sealant to, to attach it to the uh, firebox. And what that does now is, because this lid doesn't fit 
really good on top of this uh, firebox. This now will create a nice seal so that we don't get air coming in through here. So really now the only spot the air is coming in is right where we want it to, which is in our uh, vent on the side. That way we can control the temperature the way we want to. So again, another important modification, again, to seal up the, uh, the gaps that, are, that exist between uh, these offset smokers that, you know, they're just not, the workmanship and the materials just isn't there to have good, uh, good fit up between the parts. Okay, the next modification is sealing up the smoking chamber door to the, to the, uh, to the lid or to the chamber here. And again, it's the same issue with the firebox. The door just doesn't fit down on here really well. And so when, without a modification, there's a lot of gaps on how the door fits. So a couple of things that were done here. Let me open this up. Okay, I'll try to give you a letter, little better view of this gasket and how I just laid it down basically all around the outside edge of this door. And again, this one isn't a super high temperature gasket material like the firebox side is, but it works pretty good. This, uh, I've had this smoker now for, I think, three years now, and I'm not having any problems with any of the, uh, the gaskets or anything since I originally put them on right when I got it. So. It's, uh, it's holding up very well. And then also, I've got these toggle clamps. So any bit of warpage, I guess, in this door, I can now completely close it down now, airtight, by using these toggle clamps. And basically holds that door right down tight. So I don't get any smoke leaking out, no air leaking in. Just like that. Works perfect, actually. Modification number four is a uh, charcoal basket and so basically what this is made out of is just expanded metal that you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever you cut it out and it's as simple and there's YouTube videos on out there showing how to make one of these and I'll put a link to uh, to that on my page show you how to do it um, you basically just cut it out and then this one's just bend it all up. I took some of the pieces and folded them back over to hold it in place. And that's really all there is to it. So with the, basically with a die grinder, that was the only tool I needed to do this. And that thing's, and, it, and this works perfect because it holds the coals. It gives there's room around the outside for air to flow. And then all the wood will sit right into that box work in that basket. It works perfect. Lets the air keep flowing through uh, while the wood's burning. Okay, modification number five. Replacing these wheels. These are the wheels that it came with. As you can imagine, look at these things. You imagine with, especially for me with a gravel driveway here, trying to push this thing around on these steel wheels like this. And this thing's heavy. So one of the things I did was if you got a Harbor Freight in the area, they've got these wheels like this. I don't know, they probably cost about five bucks a piece or something. They're pretty cheap. And just swap those out and put these on here. They, they get, you know, maybe once in a while you got to reinflate them with air or something, but much, much better for, uh, for pushing this thing around for sure yeah, than these steel wheels. So definitely a modification I'd make sure to make on these. Okay, modification number six is what I call, what you commonly see is called the tuning plates. And what it is, it's quarter inch thick plate steel, and it's basically creating a baffle between the smoking chamber down here, or not the smoking chamber, but the firebox over here, and the smoking chamber on this side. So what will happen is I've completely blocked off the the firebox inlet over here with these tuning plates and what it does now is it forces all that heat and smoke underneath and then out through to the chimney the smoke now can still come up through here because I leave gaps between each of the plates to let smoke come up and through but that evens out the temperature between from one from the firebox side all the way to the chimney side so now I can get a temperature 
a lot of times as close as between 5 and 10 degrees from this side of the uh, cooking chamber to this side which normally if you don't put these plates in here you'll see this side here could be 50 degrees hotter than the other side as much as it could be more because I'm now blocking this off and redistributing the heat the other thing it's doing is it's absorbing and, and acting as a thermal uh, sink like like one of those uh, bigger box or more expensive smokers do with the thicker material now my thick material is laying down here in the bottom and that takes a long time for it to heat up but once it heats up it holds its heat and that helps when every time you open the the cooking chamber up you lose a bunch of heat but when you close it back down these plates will help heat it back up quicker again so very important um, you can go to some local uh, shop uh, metal shop that you've got in your area just google it you'll find one and buy the plates I think these are six inches wide and then I just had them cut cut them to the length I needed and then I just had to fit this one here you know it had to curve and uh, fit to the uh, the shape of the smoking chamber on an angle like it is uh, but basically I just used a piece of cardboard create a template and then laid it out and then used a, a die grinder to uh, to cut the shape out and it fit perfect so very important uh, this will these this change here alone will help uh, any cooking uh, issues you might have uh, that's a very good modification and I think all this material here probably cost me about forty five dollars so again not a very expensive fix well there you have it six simple steps we can turn this big box store uh, offset smoker into one that performs I'm going to say nearly as good as a thousand dollar model that you can get you know online or through mail order maybe not as good in terms of the material that it's built out of but with these modifications we can make this thing perform just as well or almost as well as one of those offset smokers so if you're looking into getting an offset smoker from a big box store or you already have one you can easily make these modifications to improve it and get yourself cooking just like the pit masters you see on TV. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you like it, click the like button. Uh, to see If you know somebody else who might enjoy it, please share it with others. Um, the other thing is, uh, please uh, look at the videos I've got here if you want to see how this thing performs. I've got several uh, cooking videos that show this thing in action and one particular that shows how to cook uh, on an offset smoker using this particular model. So thank you. We'll see you in the next video.